in this particular transformation of a flowchart logic to a program let us try to first understand what the problem is asking us to solve it says that bogilal sells mangoes based on the following information if a person buys 50 or more mangoes the rate charge is 10 if he buys between 25 and 50 that means equal to 25 and less than 50 the price charged is 15 per mango and if anybody buys less than 25 the price charged is 20 per mango so we're going to write a flow chart to generate this particular bill or we're going to take a look at how the flow chart is going to be transformed into a program so the first thing i need to know from the user is input the number of mangoes so here i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to ask enter the number of mangoes bought step number one matches with step number one here nm stands for number of mangoes rate stands for rate per mango and bill is the bill amount which is the product of number of mangoes into rate now what we're going to do is we're going to continue with the next step let's see what the next step in the flowchart tries to tell us so the next step in the flowchart is going to basically ask a decision in the sense the question is going to be is number of mangoes greater than or equal to 50 it can be either yes or true or it can be no or false let us see what happens when it is yes when it is yes bill is multiplied by number of mangoes into 10 same here bill is multiplied into number of mangoes into 10 now again i am coming here if this is false that means i have not bought 50 or more mangoes then i come here is the number of mangoes greater than or equal to 25 if it is yes bill is number of mangoes into 15 so you can see 2 here is 2 here 3 here is 3 here 4 here is 4 here 5 here is 5 here then the very last step if he has not bought more than or equal to 50 more than or equal to 25 then automatically the charge per bill amount is going to be this is going to be 20 this should be a small correction here this should be 20 so number of mangoes into 20 so i am charging 10 15 and 20 based on what is the quantity of mangoes purchased by that particular customer then item number seven i am going to print the bill and here if you see it's pretty much the same in the last step i am printing the bill is percentage f bill and the answer is going to come up and then we halt the logic same here we halt the program so now you have clearly seen how we can take a given input program explained via flowchart or the logic developed via flowchart and how easy it is to transform into the corresponding piece of code to find whether a person has passed the exam got second class got pass class got first class or a distinction based on the marks out of four subjects and we are assuming every subject is out of 100 so in Uttarakhand board the results of the student are published based on the following information every subject marks are considered to be out of 100 and we are assuming the exam is of only four subjects so if the aggregate of the four subjects he gets greater than or equal to 75 we print the message first class with distinction greater than or equal to 60 just first class greater than or equal to 50 second class greater than or equal to 40 pass class less than 40 we print fail so the way you need to understand these conditions is anything above 75 of course less than or equal to 100 is going to print first class with distinction once we check whether a person has got more than or equal to 75 then if that condition is false then only we'll come here and check whether that person has got greater than or equal to 60 so then it's only possible if he has got greater than or equal to 60 and less than 75 then we are going to print first class the same discussion continues for second pass and fails so let's try to see how this flowchart is developed and how we can transform it into a piece of code we are asking the person who is entering the data to enter the marks of four subjects as m1 m2 and m3 and m4 so same here we are defining four variables m1 m2 m3 and m4 so these are memory locations to hold the marks of four subjects so you can see there is a one-on-one -on -one correspondence between this and this i am assuming the marks are all integers and aggregate is also going to be integer all right now the next step what we are going to do is once the declaration of marks is done i am going to ask the person to enter the marks 
So here if you see what we are trying to do here is we are trying to ask the user to enter the marks of the four subjects enter the marks of the four subject and I'm reading it into M1, M2, M3 and M4. Let's see what's the next step. The next step is aggregate is calculated as sum of the marks of the four subject divided by four. So I should be doing the same thing here. I am saying aggregate is M1 plus M2 plus M3 plus M4 upon 4.0. I'll just give you a reason why I'm using this round. So if somebody gets 70.3, it rounds it up back to 70. If somebody gets 70.6, it makes it 71. That is the advantage of rounding. So if it is between 0.1 to 0.5, I take it to the lower number. 0.6 to the to 0, I take it to the higher number. The next question I'm asking is, is the aggregate greater than or equal to 75? It can be true, it can be false. So what I'm doing here is I'm just printing the average or the aggregate marks so that you get an information what is the aggregate. Then next what I'm doing here is I'm asking the question is the aggregate greater than or equal to 75. It can be true or it can be false. If it is true, I'm printing the message first class with distinction on the screen. If it is false, I'm coming here. I'm asking the question is aggregate greater than or equal to 60 it can be true or it can be false if it is true what I am doing is I am printing the message first class all right so this should take care of distinction and first class but then the logic just doesn't end here there's a lot of other things to be done we need to process for other marks or other categories so what I will do is to give you a continuity we'll just join it here so what we're doing is this NT is a connector it is connecting with the next page here so just to show you this flowchart is continuing I'm just putting it right here then the next question I'm asking is is aggregate greater than or equal to 50 it can be true or it can be false so if it is true I am printing second class okay student gets second class I'm saying second class if it is false I am checking if the aggregate is greater than or equal to 40 if the aggregate is greater than or equal to 40 I am just saying pass class and last but not the least if a student has not got anywhere between 75 60 or anything he's got marks below 40 then what I am going to do here is I am going to say print fails and then this particular logic is going to halt so again you can see how closely there is a link between the flowchart and the logic so all these decision boxes you can see here lead to a if else if statement in C so if you take this as the decision box and you want to convert it into a program you will convert if you have multiple series of decision boxes like this you will convert it into a if else if else if else if else kind of a logic stepping away a little bit from trying to help Bogilal automating his business we are going to try to do a flowchart where we are asked to find the largest or the biggest of four numbers so we are assuming the names of the four numbers are n1 n2 n3 and n4 so that's why i'm asking the user input n1 n2 n3 and n4 from the keyboard so the same is going to happen here i am asking the user enter four numbers and i am reading it into four memory locations n1 n2 n3 and n4 then when I come here what I am doing is I am first assuming without checking any other number that n1 is the biggest so same thing I am doing here I am saying n1 is the biggest then what I do is I compare each of these numbers n2 n3 and n4 one by one with big so what I am doing here is you can just take a note here if n n2 is greater than big there are two possibilities either n2 can be bigger than big or it can be equal to or lesser than big so if n2 is bigger than the big current big then i am replacing the big with n2 that's what is happening in the s case i am replacing in the no case i am doing nothing and that's why i have just the if then i am coming to check with n3 what i am doing with n3 is i am trying to check if n3 is greater than big it can either be true or it can be false if it is true I am replacing big with n3 all right now the only number left to process is n4 so I am using the connector np 
NP goes to the next page. The reason I'm using a connector is because my flowchart is traveling beyond a page. Here now I'm checking is N4 greater than big. It's again true or false. If it is true, what I am doing is I am replacing my big with N4. The condition here is the condition here. The replacement here is the replacement here. And then finally in the last step, I am printing the biggest value is using the printf. The biggest of four numbers is percentage D big. So same is being done in the flowchart. So you are able to observe how a flowchart is easily transformed into a logic. Just to keep reminding you on the verge of you getting probably annoyed, please do not skip learning logic whether it's through algorithms or flowchart. Then only you come into programming. Programming then becomes easy and enjoyable.